Hi everybody, welcome back to videos. Uh, this is Unit 5, Section 2, and we're going to talk about how to name non-binary compounds today. So binary compounds have two elements. These compounds have more than two elements. And so Um, the key with this type of compound in this section is when you see three, meaning three capital letters, turn to table E. It's like a little rhyme. When you see three, go to table E. Your, uh, that means that your compound contains one of these things. And these things on table E are called polyatomic ions. So... <clears throat> When you have a, a compound that has more than two capital letters, you have one or more of these polyatomics in it. And so the key when you see three is to turn to table E. Your compound will contain one or more polyatomic ions. Polyatomic ions are a group of atoms that function as a unit but they do have an overall charge. They are not neutral. Because if they were neutral, we would call them compounds. But they do have an overall charge, so we call them ions. So there are many atoms that function as a unit but have an overall charge. In your notes, you have this drawing. You have a central atom. Uh, if, if we're drawing the polyatomic sulfate, you can see from table E, here's sulfate. Sulfate is 1s and 4os, and add, they function as a group, meaning they're bonded, and they have a negative 2 charge. So the s is in the middle. You have your four oxygens around it. And that whole thing has a negative 2 charge, okay? So this travels around as a unit. I had asked you to draw phosphate, so why don't you pause the video now and draw phosphate? So from table E, you can see phosphate is right here. It's one, it's PO4 with a minus three charge. Now that says three minus, that's the same thing when it writes it like this as writing it like this, okay? So PO4 minus three and PO4 three minus are exactly the same thing. So check to see that you drew it correctly. You should have one phosphate in the middle and four oxygens, one phosphorus, excuse me, in the middle and four oxygens with an overall charge of negative three. So this whole thing represents one unit of phosphate, okay? Um, and that's a polyatomic ion. So these compounds contain these polyatomic ions. Just like yesterday, the rules are here in your notes for how to name them. It's best to walk through these use rules using examples. So let's take an uh, example that we have here. And we'll walk through these. Okay, so here are the examples. And I know they're hard to see, but you have them right in front of you. So the first one, it has a capital N capital H and a capital CL, right? Uh, this is example number one. Make it a little easier for you to see there. So we have three capital letters. So we want to go to table E and find something in here that's also in our reference tables. Usually it comes second, but not necessarily always. So we're looking for something in table E that's also in that comp. If you look hard, it's kind of like a little scavenger hunt. If you look, what you'll notice is you see this polyatomic here, NH4, that's right here in table E. And then CL is not on here because these are mostly all one, uh, more than one capital letter. The only one that's one capital letter is right here, peroxide, okay? But so that's not in there, so that's just the element chlorine. So our, in this case, we have a polyatomic with CL, which is our nonmetal. So we're going to use the rules here in the chart that tell us how to name that. OK, 
There we go. When you see three capital letters, go to table E, underline your polyatomics. You'll take their name right off table E. So we're going to take the name of this guy right off table E, which again is ammonium. So we're going to take his name right off table E. Ammonium. If your compound contains two polyatomics, take both of their names off the table, you're done. If your polyatomic contains a metal, we don't have that. If it contains hydrogen, nope, so we're here. If your compound contains a polyatomic and a nonmetal, name your polyatomic, name your nonmetal, drop the end name, and add IBBE. So this is ammonium chloride. Ammonium chloride. Okay? So again, it's all about finding that polyatomic. Take a minute and underline all of your polyatomics here and kind of code what's with them. So for example, if we go to table E, I'll put that up there for you. We need to find something in this compound that's also in table E. And what you may notice is you've got this guy right here, NO3 minus. So that's our polyatomic. Now you want to identify what's with it. So Fe is not a polyatomic. Fe is an element on the periodic table. It's right here. It's to the left of the stairs. So what I have in this compound is a metal with my polyatomic. So I want you to take a minute and just code those and so that we can uh, use the appropriate rules to name them. Okay, so hopefully uh, you pause this and, and you were able to identify the polyatomics using table E. And you saw that most of these were all the same type of compound. They all had, except one, a metal first and then a polyatomic. A metal polyatomic. Metal polyatomic. Metal polyatomic. The one that's different, hopefully you noticed, was this bottom one. NH4 is on the polyatomic list. And SO4 is on the polyatomic list. So this compound down here contains two polyatomics. And that is the easiest one to name because you literally just simply take their names off table E. This is ammonium. And then the second polyatomic comes second. It's sulfate. Okay, their names always go in order of how they appear in the formula. So that's ammonium sulfate. So what we haven't addressed, we've addressed how to name a polyatomic and a nonmetal. We addressed how to name a polyatomic and a polyatomic, but we didn't address how to name all of these guys that are metals with polyatomics, okay? So let's take a look at the rules on how to do that. When your compound contains a metal and a polyatomic, this is rule number three on your rules, name your metal. Look up how many charges the metal has. If there's only one possible charge, name your metal, name your polyatomic, and you're done. If there's more than one possible charge for your metal, you're going to have to do what you did for binary compounds and use the Roman numeral with the prefix, uh, Roman numeral with the parentheses. You will not use prefixes for these. The only time you do the prefixes is when it's non-metal to non-metal. So let's take a look at FENO33. I guess I, I'm going to go just to one page here so that it's a little bit bigger for us and I have more space. Whoa. Okay. So FENO33. This is our metal. We name our metal. We go to the periodic table for our metal and we look in its box. And you can see right here that iron has more than one charge in its box. So that means we're going to have to put parentheses after its name and calculate the charge on iron. So just like we did with binary compounds, we're going to give that an X, the charge up top. Okay, we don't know. It's probably a 2 or a 3, but we're not sure. We're going to name our polyatomic off table E. And NO3 on table E right here, again, is nitrate. So we take the name of that right off the table. So this is iron something nitrate. Okay, now, just again, just like we did with binaries, these, the total charges always have to equal zero. So we look up the charge of nitrate on table E. This little thing right here is the charge. It just says minus. That means minus one. So nitrate has a charge of minus one. And then again, we do bottom times top. 
So it's hard to see because I wrote here, okay? This is our x. How many irons are there in this formula? Iron does not have a subscript, so it's a one. Bottom times top, one x. How many nitrates are there? It's the number outside the parentheses. If there are no parentheses around your polyatomic, you only have one of it. You don't use the number on the polyatomic. You don't use that number. You use this number outside. So bottom times top minus three has to equal zero. So this is iron Roman numeral three nitrate. Okay, let's try another one. Metal polyatomic. So we name our metal. If you need to look up the names, they're in table S's and Sam. You go to the box for your metal and you look how many possible charges are in the box for aluminum and there's only one. So when there's only one charge, we don't use the parentheses in the Roman numeral, we just name the polyatomic. And from table E, the polyatomic CN is called, CN right here, CN is called cyanide. So this is aluminum cyanide. That's it, okay? So it's really doing the same thing we were doing before with the binaries, except we have to get the name of the polyatomic off table E. All right, MnSO33, this is the last one I'm going to do, and then I'll ask you to finish them up. So Mn2SO33. Mn is a metal, so we'll name our metal. Mn is manganese. Okay, we go to table E. And uh, sorry, we go to the reference tables for manganese. Oh boy, plus two, plus three, plus four, plus seven. He's got a wide variety of charges, so he gets an X. Okay, we go to table E and look up the name and charge of SO3. And if you go to table E and look up the name and charge of SO3, uh, there it is. SO3 has a minus two charge and it's called sulfite with an I. Okay, so this is going to be manganese, manganese, um, sulfite. We know that manganese had more than one charge in the box, so it needs the parentheses. And from table E, sulfite's charge was negative two. So we do bottom times top, two X. Remember, it's the number outside parentheses you use. Bottom times top, minus six has to be zero, 2x equals 6, x equals 3, okay? So this is going to be manganese, Roman numeral 3, sulfite, Roman numeral 3, sulfite. Okay, I'd like you to finish up these, the ones that we have not done uh, for class tomorrow, and then we'll check them and do a little bit more practice with this. Uh, these are all the compounds you need to know how to name for now, so this completes the naming portion of your notes. Have a great night, everybody. Bye-bye.